Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, I ain't going to be no stupid listeners. I appreciate you. And I'm here today with my sister, Jody Para, and she just reminded me that this is our grandma Lily's birthday, and we are here to talk about our grandmothers. So I didn't realize it was her birthday. And of course, Jody's anniversary was last week, and her birthday is this week. So that's why I picked this week to, to, to interview her. But let me just give you a little background, a little bit about who we are. And then we got some quirky stories and we're going to get into our stories for our grandmothers. But Jody here is a hot, tough one to follow. She was the smart one and the bookworm. And um, she currently is a homemaker. She has a garden. She bakes pies. She now makes her own English muffins. <laughs> She's that friend that would be the one that would bring the casserole over for the family if you had a loss. She's that girl. Um, and now she's currently retired, or I would tell you all the wonderful professional things she's done. Um, but you can find her if you, if you want. Um, but Jody, do you have anything to say about, about the fact that you are retired? And <laughs> Yeah, uh, my husband, Joe, as you know, retired. Uh, he's a bit older than me. He fully retired in December. And I said, well, I'm going to semi-retire. So we I semi-retired the same day he fully retired, and uh, we traveled with with our mom in January to Tybee Island in Georgia, and we and then Joe and I spent some time in Hawaii in February, and I came back and I formed an LLC to do a little, you know, part-time, whatever consulting work because I had done that kind of stuff before, and then the pandemic hit. So, <laughs> so yeah, we're oh, wow. really re we're really retired, retired, and that's fine because it's given me more time to to be with him and to be with our mom and, and all of that. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's all good. It's been a great time for me too. Um, I know when we play cards, we tried a little zoom calls with the four of us playing cards and talk mom into playing cards over the phone every day. And that's been a real blessing for me too. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, let's transition into some of our childhood stuff, something quirky, stupid, according to the definition of stupid, it's when you are not very, intelligent what we know about brains today though um, intelligence isn't fixed like I thought it was when I was a child <laughs> comparing myself to you and Jim but um, it is something but it, according to this for the sake of the show um, ain't gonna be no stupid insufficient intelligence would be something stupid but ignorance or is more of like an innocence right so let's just I like to start with a couple stories and feel free to join me um, a couple things I thought related to grandmothers um, one, when dad, um, we would travel from Indianapolis to upper Michigan, where they were from, it was a 10 hour drive and we would always be bickering and I would just get mad at your feet were on my side of the car. And I'd be like, mom, <laughs> Jody's feet are in my car. And then dad stopped the car once, which you could see grandma's house in the distance. And he said, I will turn this car right around if you don't stop fighting. After eight hours. <laughs> and I was like, or probably oh. 10 hours at that day. Yeah. And I remember that. And then uh, there's a lot, like when we moved up there, just, um, just how my boots were in the hallway. I think you, you had the same boots, right? Um, we had the high boots up to your knees and everybody had snowmobile boots. And so everybody mm -hmm. lined their boots out in the hallway. And 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 we were like, we, in the next year, we like, we wanted snowmobile boots. And then we got snowmobile boots and then everyone else got the high boots, you know? <laughs> so like stuff like that. And then the, co the cow that we were at the farm, I think about the times we had to go to the farm, ride our bikes and go lead our cow around and then go to the fair. And um, yes, we had cows, people. Can you believe this? <laughs> we went to grandma's house to lead our cow. So we didn't live on a farm, but it felt like we did, which was great. What a great bunch I, of memories. I thought of, a, I thought of a stupid thing I did that involves grandma's farm. Uh -oh. um, so Uncle Jerry had horses, and I think this was maybe the first horse that he had. It wasn't the later ones, but he had a mare, and uh, she was pretty gentle, and she was in the, I think you were with me. She was in kind of the back little uh, area where the um, he would feed her, and she was just um, she was there by the, um, oh, I don't know what you call it. Anyway, she was back in that back area of the barn. And I thought, well, I'm going to climb up on her back. <gasps> I think I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 she was real gentle. Let me, she actually let me get on her back and then she just started walking. I didn't know how to ride a horse. We were cow, <laughs> we were cow people. 
but he had these draft horses. They weren't and, just regular size. They were the big ones. Right, big horse. <laughs> and she started just slowly walking out of the little, uh, a little area out into the barnyard. And then she just raised up and dumped me off. <laughs> <laughs> she just she just walked away she was like that was scary. i didn't know uh, i didn't know what i was doing thank god oh, jerry never found man. out about that i know I, <laughs> it reminds me of the cow um the milk i gotta tell that story but you just reminded me too when we would go back to the cows boy talk about going back and just rubbing your face on their noses and just like being really close to them that was always great but then i remember yeah. the time when i got i got like some kind of hay and the we were getting milk we used to go pick up milk Mm -hmm. in glass bottles and and the i got some hay off my coat into the big old bulk tank i got yelled at big time oh, which of course i contaminated bad. the whole thing right i don't yep. think he threw it out though i think he still sold it to frigo i don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> okay so there's a lot of oh my gosh there's so many quirky stories from when we were little but um <laughs> let's head into I know I want to say one thing uh, I did put a, f a Facebook post out on my ain't gonna be no stupid website uh, or in Facebook and, and I just got this in this morning I thought this was some interesting I asked the question what is one piece of advice your grandma gave you and mm. she said I didn't get advice and it's true right I don't remember advice from grandma Benson or grandma Lily it's just the way they live their life and that's how we learn so she said they were best friends, and she said that they didn't helicopter. They mm. weren't helicopter, or snowplow parents. You know, those parents that push the snow away so the kids don't have any struggles. <laughs> um, it's, uh, she said they let us figure it out on our own, which I think is cool. And then she said parents taught us by example. And I think that's so cool, and it's such a good segue into going into what we're going to talk about today with uh, all, mm, our, yeah. all our great, great, great. Jody's done a ton of ancestral work. Um, she's very detail oriented and, and, and I hope we follow this journey because it's amazing, uh, the family history that we have going on here. Okay, so should we start with uh, Hel Helen DePore? I don't even know how to say her, our 10th great great grandmother or great. -grandmother. <laughs> yeah, so um, our dad's family is uh, French Canadian. And so, and the, the really kind of neat thing about Quebec. Uh, and and the early French settlers is that um, there's a lot of stories about the women. So a lot of times in history, you know, it's all about the men. And he would he he was a farmer, he was a carpenter, and he was whatever. But um, it's it's often hard to find stories about the women because usually they were home with the kids, right? Well, in uh, the French Canadians. Um, the early settlers who came over were mostly men, but there were so many men and not enough women that they were actually were recruiting young unmarried women to come over to New France, what's now Canada, um, to, to marry the men. And they've documented a lot of these women and every French Canadian can trace their ancestry back to at least one of these women because there were, I think a couple hundred uh, of them, two, 300 of these women and they ended up all having, most of them having 10 or 12 kids. And that was, you know, um, the early uh, settling of, of New France by the Europeans who came. Of course, there were Native Americans who were there uh, ahead of time. But, but the first one that you mentioned is, and I'm not sure if I know the pronunciation either because I'm not a French speaker, but I think it's Hélène de Porte. Uh, mm. And um, she was our 10th great grandmother. She was born about 1620 in Quebec, which makes her, according to uh, Wikipedia and the, the research that's out there, uh, perhaps the first white child born, white European child born in Quebec, in, in um, Canada, um, who survived. And, you know, of course, they were very, very early settlers of Quebec, like with Samuel Champlain, who was the founder of Quebec. Uh, her parents and she was like a little girl that first winter a little baby that first winter and then grew up there as a little girl was you know one of one of the only children um, and so she must have been you know just treasured I would think um, by the by the um, the people who the colonists but of course you know when we look back on our lens we see them as these you know heroic mm -hmm. settlers you know uh, mm -hmm. when and um, in fact, you know, they were they were actively taking land, you know, along the St. Lawrence River and uh, mm -hmm. from the Native Americans who 
who lived there. So we do need to, it was one of the things that I, you know, hadn't really reflected on until I started doing some of this genealogy research about um, the, our, our active involvement in, you know, that, uh, the harm that we caused to the First Nations people who, who had been here for thousands of years. So in one way, she was, uh, a, you know, she, her parents and she were kind of pioneers uh, and the other, in another way, you know, they were, they were actively kind of taking part in that, that whole, um, you know, colonization and, you know, uh, taking land from First Nations. Do you know Canadian schools tell their history honestly, unlike what the, our textbooks say? Well, I, I don't know. I, I do know that they, their government has a bit of a different relationship with the, the native, you know, uh, people, they, they do call them first nations, mm -hmm. whereas, you know, here we call them native Americans or tribes, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and there's a, there's a different, there's a different relationship with them, but it, it has much of the same kind of history. And I don't know what the history books in Canada teach versus yeah. ours. Yeah. I'm not I know sure. you've been there a few times. I'm ashamed of myself of not having gone there yet. Oh, it's so, it's so, it's really Beautiful, cool to right? go. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll move there one day. <laughs> um, so we do, we do have a lesson here that we should not only look through history through a white lens um, and really see the, the full picture. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go into the next lesson we can learn that women are strong and can stand their own trials and support themselves through business while also taking care of others, which sounds like you, Jody. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, the next story is about our eighth great grandmother. So eighth by eighth great grandmother, you take eight greats in front of grandmothers. Uh, yeah, that's I how still the, am, yeah, yeah, it's like you know, you have, that's how many generations back she is. You went her name deep was, into our history. Well, and, and again, because of the 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 church, the the Catholic Church, and and the French, they have genealogy records that go way back. So other people like did most of this research for me. <laughs> like I, mm -hmm. I just had to connect to the right ancestor and, mm. and it goes back. But yeah, Marie Denise Lemaitre, Le um, she was our eighth great grandmother. She was born in Paris. Um, it sounds like she was poor. Um, her, um, her parents, you know, were, um, were there in Paris, but she ended up working as a midwife uh, for a hospital. And then she was recruited to come over to, uh, to Canada. So she ended up in Montreal in 1659. The boat she was on had the plague. There were people who died and had to be dumped overboard. She was 23 years old. Um, she ended up marrying Pierre Perra, who you know, was our eighth great grandfather. Um, and, um, she also, she died, uh, when she was about our age, she was mm. killed by the Iroquois. Mm. Um, so again, a conflict with the natives, um, the native peoples, um, they were living south of Montreal and I've been to the little town where they, where they were one of the first, you know, people. Is that where Para Boulevard there. is? Uh, n no, but there are in nearby towns. <laughs> yeah. And they say Para, right? I know you, you switched, Jim switched to Paris just to say, I still say the S is silent. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why yeah. I never changed. I just said, nope, that's my name. Just like everyone else, right? We need to respect yeah. everybody's names and how hard they are to say. Right. We need to right. not say, can you Americanize that please? <laughs> no, we're going to say right. it the way it's pronounced. So, right. Right. Well, that's good. Yeah. But she was, she was, I think she had 10 children 10 or 11 children and and uh a, a couple of husbands before you know she became a midwife again late in life and so she helped she helped women with their you know with childbirth uh toward the end of her life too so she seems to me what i've heard heard and read about her as a pretty strong woman who you know um who survived um a lot of things including setting up her own she was she was trading for furs which again is another led to you know the near extinction of a lot of <laughs> a lot of fur bearing mammals during those days but um she 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 was someone who kind of was a survivor too and took care of herself when you know after both of her husband her first husband and second husband had passed away well you say she's a strong woman and i start to think to myself i don't really know any women that aren't strong <laughs> you know what i mean i feel mm. like i feel like it's like 
the struggle to exist and then all the things women are expected to do and then overcome and uh -huh. just this silent um suffering that we go through sometimes you know i don't know my favorite novel the awakening from by kate chope and i sent you the yellow wallpaper short story and it's just this book i've read like nah, i don't know i taught it so i mean over 20 times right and it's just about a woman, you know, just who just is in this time of actually mini Gamash's time pretty much is our next segue. But she, she's just suffering in silence and she finally just keeps having an awakening and an awakening and so society's not respecting it or, or they, they don't like it. Um, but I can totally relate to her at every level. Of, I've read it in my 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s and, and telling mm -hmm. you it just each time it speaks to me. So let's transition mm -hmm. into mini Mini Gamash, her, we learned this year that her middle name is Amelie and mm -hmm. my name is Amy. So we kind of got a gig a lot of that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I was named after my, I don't know which grand grandmother. Great grandmother, our great grandmother. Great -grandmother. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so that was kind of cool, but I wasn't really, but it was just cool to see that. So tell us what we can learn about life with Minnie. It's something yeah. about marriage, right? Yeah, well, Minnie, um, Minnie was someone who was always a bit of a mystery to me because she was um, she was married to our great grandfather Hubert Para, and um, they were both immigrants from Quebec. Um, she had come when she was a small child with her parents, and he came when he was a young adult by you know with his brother. Um, they both came, ended up in Michigan, and um, but because she died. In, shortly after giving birth to their 10th child, there, there weren't a lot of stories about her. She had died so young. Um, but one of our cousins um, this year found this diary from 1904 wow. that was hers. Oh, and then and, she's the one with all the suitors, right? Or she yeah. always would write about a man. Yeah, it's, it's so my cousin, um, Mary Better sent this to me and um, I've been, I've transcribed it. And you know, this was, cause I was just wondering, did anyone have stories about her? I was just real interested. Well, we find this diary where, where it's not, it's not a lengthy diary. It's more like a day book, you know, yeah. a calendar. And each day she would jot a couple of things about what, what she did. And so here she was in 1904, she, she turned 20 that February. Um, she had lots of men coming by and taking her to dances. She talked about going to a dance Dancing. and she, she she didn't miss a dance all night, which I know you That's love to me. dance. That's how I roll. That's wild. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. named, well, I'm not named after her, but just the, the similarities. Yeah. Yeah. And we I didn't know. I always rip up my journals though, in case y'all find oh. them. I go. <laughs> We didn't know that her full name was Marie Amelie, but I found her baptism record from Quebec. And so, you know, even on all of her, all of her uh, records in the U.S., it all says Minnie. So, um, but yeah, she had all these guys stop and buy the farm there in Hermansville, Michigan, you know, to, <laughs> to see her. And it just, she had no shortage of suitors, but um, she didn't get married for another four years when she was 24 years old. And in those days, that was pretty old. Yeah. And I'm, I'm still researching the bits of the, of the diary, but it just seems like she, you know, it was the turn of the century. Women didn't yet have the right to vote, but many women were trying to get the right to vote. Mm -hmm. um, they had recently been given the right to own property. And so at the end of the diary, it shows where she signs a mortgage for $550 with the Wisconsin Land and Lumber Company. I don't know wow. what she was, if it was a house in town, if it was, I don't know if it was land, what she was buying, um, you know, but for, for a 20 year old woman um, who, you know, she, she didn't, she, she waited to find the right person, right? So uh, something about Hubert when she finally met him, I'm not, yeah. not sure when that and was. The, and the jury's out if she really just, succumb to it <laughs> no <laughs> I, she, you think I, she really loved him oh yeah oh, that's yeah cool. i think i think well i have a picture of him around here somewhere oh and you can tell him them, the, you can tell him the smile we'll have to show you we'll oh. have to sh we'll have to, you'll have to insert the photo of them okay. the two of them are very very oh. you know, striking and he was older too like he was um he was maybe 28 or 30 when they got married so they both were waiting i think for the right person and not just yeah. i have to get that's married great. kind of thing but um, it just seems like she was, you know, she was selling soap and, and uh, doing domestic work. And, you know, she, she, she was digging potatoes maybe for oh, her like dad. Voodoo. 
yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so, um, so I think about, you know, she didn't, she, I, I think that it was expected in those days, right, that you were going to get married and you were going to have children. Mm -hmm. And, and she mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the last child she had was, you know, took her life. I was mean, it preeclampsia? I don't know. The, the death certificate says septic peritonitis, uh, mm. which is like an infection. And she died, uh, I think, about 10 days after the baby was born. And the baby also died. Mm. So there was something with that pregnancy, unfortunately. Um, mm. You know, and, and back then, you know, women didn't have that many choices in terms of birth control. Of course, the Catholic Church didn't, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't accept birth control. So, you know, you wonder. Um, would she have survived if, if yes. she lived in a different time? Um, yes. Of course, medicine probably would have helped her save her life. But mm. I know one of my one of my cousins, uh, one of our cousins, said that their mom, uh, who was our grandma's sister, uh, said we knew she was she knew she was dying. And there was just nothing we could do, you know. Oh. So it was very sad for those children. She had, yeah, you know, she had nine children. Which segues uh, all ten years and younger. Who, I know and who that, were left behind. I know, and that segues right into our grandmother's story. Where she was one of those children. It's Grandma Lily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and it's her birthday today. Well, the yeah. today that we are um, that we are taping this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm wearing her little clip-on earrings and her brooch. And just, I remember her taking those off and just like, <laughs> oh, my ears hurt so bad. Oh. Yeah, so. I couldn't wear these all day, but yeah, her little clip just, on rhinestone nice. earrings. <laughs> nice. That's so cool. That's so yeah. Good. Yeah. Grandma <laughs> Lily, um, she has quite the journey, quite the story, but let's talk about how, what it was like. And you know, more details about the orphanage that they were sent to right after that and how right. that all. Yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what years um, they were at the orphanage because there's the kids are still with Hubert, uh, uh, three months later when the census is taken in 1920 and they're all on the farm. And then sometime in September, 1920, about almost a year later, he sells the farm. Cause I have this ad, auction ad where he's selling everything. Everything wow. must go kind of auction. Um, and then there's an ad from 1921 where Hubert is, is advertising for a housekeeper to take care of children aged three to 12. So it's possible he, he still had the children in 1921 and, then the authorities at some point, you know, maybe sometime in 1921, they were like, these children are not, you know, being well taken care of. They probably were running you, around town, right? It's a small well, town, but I'm sure they were probably just <laughs> wandering. Who knows? I don't know. And the oldest, yeah, the two oldest girls who were like 11 and 12 were trying to take care of all their younger siblings. So, oh, oh that was, it just must have been really hard, you know, yeah, and yeah, just yeah. how, and, and I'm sure, sure he was, he was just devastated by losing Minnie. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, the seven of the kids were taken away to an orphanage in uh, near Green Bay, Wisconsin, and 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 they were there. According to to one of our cousins, um, her uh, our auntie Ora said they were there for four years. I did not realize that four yeah. years in an orphanage. Yeah, and yeah, then, that's what that's what Auntie then, Ora said. Okay, so we want to go talk about Clara. I know we got more with Lily, <laughs> but let's talk about Clara because I think that connects to what happens here with the with the orphanage. Yeah, so um, so the the kids were at the orphanage. It looks like we have postcards and things. It looks like Hubert, you know, visited them from time to time. And, and that's even a two-hour drive, by the way. Yeah, everybody. yeah. And like today, it's two hours. It's probably longer. Oh yeah, than, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't it's think probably of that. dirt roads and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Um, yeah, and uh, he and and probably a ferry to get across the river and all that stuff. Anyway, oh my gosh. Um, he. Um, he even sent money because we have a postcard where the nun said, thank you for, we got your, you know, we got the check for the, for the boarding account. <clears throat> but, but um, yeah, he, he had to leave those kids. Uh, his, he had five daughters and two sons who were at the orphanage and the two oldest girls stayed with him um, until sometime I around 1925 or 1926, 1926, there was a woman named Clara Walls and her husband um, was killed in an accident on a farm. He, he was dynamiting stumps. So back then they were still clearing stumps that the loggers had cut down and so that they could farm the land. Mm. 
Mm. Um, and so he was dynamiting stumps on some land that he owned and, a, and the dynamite uh, killed him. Um, when it didn't go off, he went to check on it. And uh -huh. um, she had one son um, uh, who, was, who was 18 at that time. So he was, he was almost grown. And uh, um, she went, somehow went to work for Hubert as a housekeeper. And uh, according to our dad's memoirs that he wrote, they had to fill out a lot of paperwork to get the kids you know, back, to get the kids released. But um, now that he had a woman in the house, I guess he could have, yeah. he could have his kids back. And so I think around 1926, um, the kids came back to live, or, or it's probably around that time, the kids came back to live with Hubert and Clara, and she as his housekeeper, and later, um, within a year or so, that she became their stepmother. That's amazing. So, yeah. So, so then, like, know, that's, again, another, is it a love story, or was it a, oh, I'll marry you, I could have this little baby, which comes into play in a minute, but I'm not going to be cynical here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I think Hubert was pretty charming I have some I have some postcards that he wrote to Minnie oh. that that uh that he was pretty romantic uh, okay I believe it they're in French and they're a little hard to read but yeah so people would ask Clara well why well, how could you marry a man with nine kids well, what are you she says well I loved him, you know, and she, and she says, and then she said she loved the kids too. She says, you know, you don't have to poop them out to, to love yes, them. <laughs> yes, that's exactly how she said it. I remember the stories, but so weird how you just said they were in an orphanage for four years. Cause the way I heard the story is that this woman came and just fell in love and took, took the kids and scooped them up and they never, I never wasn't made that, that distance. That's I insane. think it was, yeah. From what I'm hearing, it was, they were there for four years. I, I'm, I've written to the, to the diocese in Green Bay, they have someone who helps with this kind of stuff, I guess, and um, ask them if they could let us, you know, give me at least the dates that the yeah. kids were there. But circling back to Lily, yeah, who was the oldest of the seven kids who were sent to the orphanage. Uh, she That's was our grandmother. Yeah, she. Um, can you imagine being the oldest of the kids who they they must have all like been looking to her, you know, uh, her or or or. Um, Edna was the second oldest, you know. So the other or, two, there was two ahead of her, I thought, that yeah. they were already old enough they didn't have to go to the orphanage. Right. So she was the oldest in the orphanage. I didn't know that either. Yeah, yeah. Marie and Rose were the oldest girls, and by then they would have been probably 13 and 12, and they were allowed to stay with Hubert because they were, mm. I guess, old enough to be, you know, wow. to not have as much care. Mm. So now, doesn't Grandma Lily go doesn't she go back not to that same orphanage but the same town she had to go back and and be in a home for unwed mothers because right. she got pregnant by a guy named garland buckley mm -hmm. which we did get con confirmation i think it was last summer mom and i went to um green bay to get the answer and you know we had all the documents but we didn't something happened where we, we didn't had the have, yeah you got we got the birth you got to see the birth certificate and why did she have to um give it to me on a post-it note kind of secretly of who he was. It was weird. It was a cool moment because it was like, <gasps> there he is. We weren't sure it was him. We always heard mm -hmm. it was him, but we weren't mm -hmm. sure. So getting that confirmation last summer that he was our grandfather. And we've done some DNA testing that would That's appears, right. appears to confirm that he was in yeah. fact our grandfather. Yep, yep. Because um, we never knew him uh, no. and neither did our dad. No. And then he found out he was an artist, which we have a niece who's very artistic. But I think you and I have some artistic gifts as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. not in print so much, but you know, there's, mom mm -hmm. has them too. But anyway, um, so we go back to Grandma Lily gets, well, they owned a bar, Paris Bar in NATO. Um, yeah, but it was prohibition, so it wasn't a bar then. Oh, undercover. Did they, <laughs> did they, did they, under, did they have like a speakeasy in the basement? I don't know. I don't Whoa. know. I would... Allegedly, we are assuming that Lily Lily said it out of her own mouth that she was raped by Garland and he went to jail for nine months. Yeah, I'm trying to find, I want to find those dad's, records too. That's our dad, that's our dad's story, right? Mm -hmm. um, so she had to go to Green Bay to stay in a home for unwed mothers back mm -hmm. then. And then Clara and Hubert magically adopted a baby, <laughs> which was our dad, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's Clara spoiled him rotten. Hold right. It. So that was, you know, I, I think they probably both spoiled him rotten because that was, that was the child that they did, they had together. Um, Hubert had to send his two sons away, right? Or they were taken away. 
to an orphanage for four years. And so I can imagine that he was thinking, well, I, I don't want that to happen to my grandson because where, where our dad was born in this home for unwed mothers, um, the, the girls who couldn't care for their kids, they were, they were given up, right? And they, and they would live at this home for a couple of years. If they weren't adopted out, they would end up in an orphanage. Now, Lily probably, I think Lily wanted dad, but Hubert and Clara uh, said, you know, fought her. I think mm -hmm. that's another, that's another thing I would like to find the court records for if they're, yeah. if they're out there. Um, but anyway, Hubert and Clara ended up raising him as though he was their son. And then he found out from some kid in the schoolyard at age eight that, oh, that's not your, those aren't your parents. You know, your sister is really your mom. Yeah. And, he said that was a devastating moment for him. Yeah. 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 And then Lily, of course, you know, she, um, she of course loved him, but couldn't be his mom. And, Can't imagine. Um, yeah. And, and she, she, I think felt that, always felt that she was the black sheep of the family because of that. She never had any other children. She was yeah. married later on to, um, first to um, a man named Victor Kluff, and then to uh, the, the only grandfather we ever knew, Grandpa Joe Keeney, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but she didn't have children with, with either of those. So my dad was her only child, but, but they never had that mother-son relationship because, yeah. of, because of that, yeah. So we learned from Lily that when life gives you lemons, make lemonade pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She ended up she ended up, you know, having a pretty successful, you know, life. I think she 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 was a career woman. She she worked for a hotel in Sheboygan and then later she did clerical and bookkeeping work. She um she seemed to be, you know, pretty pretty happy there in her little community in Sheboygan and she yeah. she was a survivor for sure. Yeah, I was able to live there for a summer when I was in college. So my friend had a, a, a grocery store there. So I was able to spend the last, you know, uh, part of the end of her life. I used to take her to a grocery store once a week, I think. And it was great, too. And I remember a memory of her when she would come visit us in Michigan. She always did those little word search puzzles. And yet she would fall asleep while doing them. And I was so little, I thought she died like 10 times <laughs> because she would fall asleep. I'm like, did you die? Like, I literally would have to wake her up. I didn't know what to do. Cause you know, we never were really around older people. So that was kind of... um, yeah. but, but Clara, I think what we can learn from Clara is um, that ordinary people can do extraordinary things. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's insane that she lost her husband and came up to, to, to become a mother to nine children yeah. <laughs> and yeah. fall in love. Wow. That was, that's insane. Yeah. yeah. And just a really uh, cute story that I heard about her was when, when Hubert died, you know, he was in the hospital, I think in Menominee and um, he had, was having some heart problems or something. And she was down visiting him at the hospital and, it was getting late and so she had to go go back home and and she gave him a kiss to say goodbye and he said you better get them while get another one while they're hot oh and yes she, she laughed and she gave him another kiss and and left and um and he died before she got home she Isn't she was on she, when she got home you know there was a there was a phone call that he had passed away oh. so she got that extra kiss while they were still hot oh. yeah oh my gosh yeah. And then, wait, Clara is the one who died when Jim was born, our brother, right? Yeah. yeah. So that was more like in 1960. 62. Wow. Well, let's cut over to Garland, our final grandmother. Um, now that we know who, who our, our other side is, Della Buckley has quite a story as well. And then mm -hmm. we'll end with our, with our three pieces of uh, advice, or not advice, or things you can do with your grandmother. Yeah, so... Uh, as I was doing some of this genealogy research, I was, uh, you know, th thankfully with a name like Garland Buckley, it's pretty easy to like find that name when you're in newspapers.com and looking in old papers. So I found out he actually lived not far from where I live. He lived in, in, grew up in Muncie, Indiana. But I found this article, I found out, of course, who his parents were from, from that. And I found this article from, that was written during you can you can put a picture of it up later, but um, written during World War II about Miss Della Buckley, and it says we salute Mrs. Della Buckley. So this is our great grandmother again, <clears throat> Garland Buckley's mother, and um, her husband. She was a widow, and her husband had um, had been a dairy farmer, 
and Garland was in the was a was in the war, and she shows up at the uh, Goodyear plant because um, she knew you know they were they were hiring people to help with the war effort, and she shows up saying, you know, I I want to work, and they they said, well, you know, she didn't she didn't meet our age and weight requirements, and we don't think she'll be able to pass our physical exam, so they're just not even going to call her call her back, and she she just kept coming by and she said you better put me to work because I want to be part of this war and you might as well you may as well just call and tell them you're putting me to work because I'm gonna I'm gonna be here no matter what that sounds and, like you yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so they said well let's go ahead and put her to work and since then it says uh, she has not missed a single day and her production record has grown until it is the highest in the entire plant Love it. So, so yeah, she, she was apparently, uh, you know, you talk about strong women. This is, this is a woman who is like, I'm going to, you know, I want to be part of this, uh, this effort. I want to, I want to do my part and not sit at home and I'm going to work at this Goodyear plant in a very tough job in my, she must've been in her fifties or sixties then. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, she she was like, you're not going to say no to me. I'm going to do this. I love that. I know. And I like you said, she was part of the war effort to help. And yet you said that I think the lesson we can learn is that be a, be a part of something bigger than yourself. Right. Make a difference in the world you're at. We are here to definitely make a difference. And I think people are just, um, we can't just be all about our own little happiness and live in our own little bubble, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Find something that means something to you and go after it. Yes. Love that. Yeah. Um, so I have a, a couple final points. Then do you have your notes with the three points that you have as well? I've lost them. Okay. So. I've got them. I got them. Okay. That's funny. That's more like an Amy move, but we won't put that <laughs> on me. I got to have a funny story. I was thinking about hard work growing up. We always had chores that mom would go to work and we, you and I would stay home and we were the laziest kids. I realized, and she would give us chores. And I think the last day, part of the day, She'd come home at three and we'd be like 245, maybe, <laughs> maybe 255, starting the dishes, you know, and then running around doing our chores. Just, I'm just thinking how lazy we just let the TV raise us. We looked through the Sears robot catalog for, to dream about what, what we wanted in our future. We had to weed the garden, I remember. And yet we, we did it in, the, in a way like I'm looking back on it, but we both of us are really hard workers now. So it's just interesting as children, I always felt like I wasn't that part of a worker, including academically, right? Yeah, I think, I think, well, I worked on at the farm that one summer uh, and Uncle Jerry taught me that lesson. And then also oh, yeah. I think- he caught, you, he caught you being lazy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. He's like, good, oh, good. we needed that. Maybe. What were like you doing that? all morning? Why, you're not done yet. Why aren't you doing that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, don't sit around. Yeah, yeah and then I think, Playing basketball too teaches you, yeah, teaches you hard work, right? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Another lesson I want to say, Grandma, Mom, I'm going to say because I thought about a moment with Mom. She's a grandma, but one time I lied to her. Well, I lied to her many times, but one time she caught me. And one of the things that she did is say she kind of scolded me and just was like, "Don't you ever lie to me." And I think that infused inside of me like. like like, oh, lying is bad. And ever since then, I've been all about the truth, you know, of all, all about speaking truth and, and finding truth. Mm -hmm. And it was a really pivotal moment for me. So again, not that our mothers or that generation, like Sally was saying, they didn't have advice. They lived in integrity and they modeled it for us. Mm -hmm. And it was really a beautiful way to grow up, you know, but especially in that small town. Um, I just love that. So, um, there's a Bible verse that came to me and I was thinking about all these women, those that wait on the Lord shall walk and not faint. It's Isaiah 40, 31. And I just think about walking with the Lord and how they must have had him like to get through all of this. They must have, have, have had some sort of faith. I don't really mm -hmm. know the history of it. I know they were Catholic um, and watching grandma say her prayers, I guess is all I really know, but that's mm -hmm. just one thought I had. And then also activities with your grandparents right now during COVID, my mom and I have been able to play cards every day since March and I'm still winning the tournament, <laughs> um, but it's just something we look forward to every day. Actually, we're starting to play twice a day now because oh, wow. you know, it's summer and why not? And then <laughs> another thing, I don't know if I'm one of those old people that got on TikTok and it's a great app and there's some grandparents. If you guys 
have any ideas that if your grandparents um, on TikTok, you could go viral just talking to them because there's women mm-hmm. on there that are like in their 90s and they're just talking to their grandchildren and they are going viral with some of the things that they're saying. So that's just <laughs> another fun activity. But Jody, you had these three ideas to ask your grandparents these three questions. One, yeah, I would say if you are if you are lucky enough to still have your grandparents yeah, yeah, yeah. Good alive or yeah. your or your parents. Or your parents. Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> these, yeah, mom, if are, you're listening, here's some questions we're going to be asking. <laughs> what is one event that really was hard, but you came out stronger? That's the first question. Two, who is one woman you admire and why? And three, how have you seen women's roles, expectations, and freedoms change in your lifetime? So any final thoughts, Jody? Because I know you're not a grandmother yet, but there is a possibility one day you will be. I know you got a lot of you got a lot of pets. You got one son. Yeah. Well, a son and a stepson. And a stepson. Yeah. So yeah. there's a chance. <laughs> and there's, there's a probably chance. No chance for me, but that's okay. We just wanted to honor our grandmothers. And I just want to thank you, Jody, for being here with your detailed brain and all the research you've done. And I know you are writing a book, maybe based on um, Minnie's diary. Mm-hmm. And um, I know we can find you. Do we want to find, do you want us to find you? Do you need some <laughs> consulting work or we, uh, you can, yeah, oh, you the, can. the Facebook, your, your mono. Yeah. Yeah. You can find me on LinkedIn uh, and also Twitter at Jody Paris, although I'm not very uh, yeah. active there these days, but yeah. we also have this traveling uh, monkey that goes with us on our travels when we are traveling. Yes. And he has a Facebook page. Yes. If you ever want tips on travel, Jody's really good at details, like where to go, what to eat, where to find it. She's great. Once we can travel again. I know. <laughs> I know. But yeah. you can plan. You can plan yeah. now, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, Mono M Monkey World Traveler is on Facebook. Okay, and, uh, cool. I'll put it all in the notes then. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So. Thank you for going on this journey with me, Jody. I appreciate Thanks. you. Happy birthday. I love you. And I shall see you soon on probably a Zoom call. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Love you too. All right. Bye. Bye.